You better stop acting regular, regular schmegular, like you're just everybody else out here, like you're that old man you used to be in your old wine skin. That's not you anymore. In 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone. The new has come, exclamation point, exclamation point. In the Greek translations, we get two different meanings for the word new. The first one is neos, which, mean, which means just made, N-E-O-S, which means just made, but there are many in existence like it. The second one, which is the new, the definition here of kranos is just made, but there is nothing in existence like it. That's you. That's you. There is nothing in existence like you when you're in your new nature. You know, when you're in that dead nature, everything's like you. You know, what separates people when they're walking around dead in their sins, all that separates people is, is the things they argue about, you know, colors, mindsets, um, money, you know, who's got more, who's got less. That's the only difference is the worldly things. But when you're made new in the spirit, there is nothing out there like you, nothing out there like you. And unique you were knit together, knit together, which is a very intricate process if you've ever knitted, very particular intentional and God did this he predestined you let's get into that scripture so he didn't make you to be a better you better old than the old you your better version no you're not a 2.0 you're brand spanking new he made a brand new creature he didn't improve on you he gave you his holy spirit which made you brand new there was actually a death you died. You actually died to the flesh and you were reborn into a new creature, which is that of the spirit. And there's nothing out there like you because the old you is dead. In Romans 8, 29, 30, we have here that God foreknew. He foreknew about you. That was his choice. Something from nothing. He made you predestined, called, justified, and glorified those who are conformed to the image of his son. So that's not even, you know, on the last day of this world, that's not going to be everybody. Stop acting regular. Stop acting regular when you're chosen. And with all the other teachings on this channel, with all the other words of prophecy on this channel, you know better than to let that go to your head. But don't you ever forget what set apart means. Well, being a pure, you're in a peculiar person until you can know the full identity of the entirety of how special God created you to be, of how he really sees you. And you can walk in that in humility, in purpose. Now you are a peculiar person. Let's keep going. Ephesians 1, 4, and 5 tells us that God predestined us. You are my friends if you do what I command. This is the voice of your Messiah. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. With his Holy Spirit in you, he's made known that to you. There's already within you a wealth. There's such great ability and capacity within all who have the Holy Spirit. It's about tapping in. 
And we are being called by God himself to tap in. He wants us to tap in. Yes, he wants us to work at the entirety, to work with the entirety, to work for the entirety of his spirit that is within us. And to stop being so worldly and regular and bored and complacent and counterfeit and listless and slothful. And that's boring anyway. Let's keep going. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command, love each other. Whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. Let's get one more scripture, hold on. So we're gonna travel over to 1 John 5, 14 and 15. This is how not regular you are. This is a confidence we have in approaching God that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we asked of him. So whatever you ask according to God's will, he hears you. And knowing, because you have to know that he hears you. So you know that he hears you, whatever you ask. And scripture is really particular. This is the word whatever whatever you ask according to his will, we know that we have what we asked of him. It doesn't say that we know what we will, that we will have. We know that we have what we have. You know what Holy Spirit's been putting on my heart? This came out in the prayer session yesterday. Somebody had been praying about a promise and, and sometimes I'll begin to pray and I just get a word from the Lord. And he was saying how in another time and space, it's already done. That's the kind of trust that he wants to bring your non-regular schmegular butt into. Knowing that, because God goes before you. I mean, he's omnipresent. That doesn't just mean he's everywhere. It means he's all time. You know, to us, time is linear. To God, past, present, future, it's all the same to him. You know, this is just our concept of time. There was a past and this is a future and present. But to the Lord who predestines, who has gone ahead of us, who was, is, and forever will be, these things have already come to pass. These things have already come to pass. And, 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 and how non-regular you are is that he's saying, be so confident that whatever you ask me according to my will, you have not will have, not maybe, not hope, not beg, not wonder, not wait, <laughs> but that you have, that you should truly believe without seeing because blessed are those, Jesus said, who truly believe without seeing. Now, yes, New Agers and lukewarm counterfeit Christians will take it to a place of, I want a million dollars. I have a million dollars. No, you don't because we're talking about God's will here. So you've got to know God's will here which is according to the word. A lot of people are believing that God gave them promises he didn't. I didn't say everybody, but for some, yes, it's the truth. And if you keep waiting on that, I've got nothing to say to you. That's, that's your personal choice. I am talking to those who are content with the many promises that the Lord has already given us in the word. Does it mean he's not going to give you more promises? No, of course not. It means why don't we start with God's word? And in God's word, anything that he said you can do, it is done. Whatever God has said in the word, it is already finished. So you can confidently come before him and claim these things. Confidently come into the throne room and receive these things. Confidently know that as you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, that all things will be added to you because they already have. That's how not regular you are. That's how special to God, how appointed, how predestined and chosen that you are. You know, a lot of people take, you know, how I feel about the whole chosen thing, but we are, we are chosen, but a lot of people take it to this weird place. You know, the saddest thing about the weird place that people take the chosen mentality to is they don't get what's already available. 
people take it to a place of pride. Yes, I'm chosen because of my blood and my lineage or my color or my nationality, whatever it is. Awesome. Y'all can keep all that. What we're going to go off of is the word. The word tells us that we're so chosen that whatever we ask according to the will of the Father, we have. And if you choose to walk in that, if you truly choose to do the greater things that Jesus has called you to do, you will. You absolutely will. It's impossible not to. This comes down to choice. Believing every word of God, not manipulating it for the for the weird, regular human understanding that people are taking it to. We're missing it. We're missing it. We're missing it. Hold on. So in Matthew 28, 18, Jesus comes up to the disciples and spoke to them saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. And we've been getting a lot of words about that. I just posted a word in community section the other day uh, because the Lord just has like keep talking to us about bringing heaven down, bringing heaven down. What the Lord has endowed you with in heavenly places. Don't look at these things as concepts or too far out or just not for you or for everyone else or whatever it is. You're not like everyone else. And you've got to walk in that. That is God's glory, purpose, and predestination for you. That you, unique you, should walk in his spirit here on this earth. 